Can everyone hear me? Hey, well, I don't know if uh, Karen is from this group or not, but someone sent me sort of a request to read I Need Do Nothing in the Big uh, the Course of Miracles. So I'm going to do that today. It's only a, one or two pages and then we'll, I haven't read it in a long, long time. So, all right, if you have that, the blue A Course in Miracles book, this one, it's on page 388, 388. I need do nothing. All right. Oh, first of all, hello, Paul. Nice to see everybody. And uh, yeah, everyone's okay with A Course in Miracles reading? Yes, no? Yeah, somewhat. All right, great. All right, so page 388. I need do nothing. You could skip the whole content and just stay with that, but uh, you still have too much faith in the body as a source of strength. What plans do you make that do not involve its comfort or protection or enjoyment in some way? This makes the body an end and not a means in your interpretation. And this always means you still find sin attractive. No one accepts atonement for himself who still accepts sin as his goal. You have thus not met your one responsibility. Atonement is not welcomed by those who prefer pain and destruction. I think there's a difference in the book, yeah? Someone's a scholar here, you know, correct me, but there's forgiveness and atonement. And atonement is that uh, nothing ever really happened to forgive. Yeah? You're seeing it before, not after. So if you see it after, it's forgiveness. If you see it before, it's atonement in a way. Yeah. Yeah, so there is one thing that you have never done. You have not utterly forgotten the body. It has perhaps faded at times from your sight, but it has not yet completely disappeared. You are not asked to let this happen for more than an instant. Yet it is in this instant that the miracle of atonement happens. Afterwards, you will see the body again, but never quite the same. And every instant that you spend without awareness of it gives you a different view of it when you return. Yeah. At no single instant does the body exist at all. <laughs> it is always remembered or anticipated, but never experienced just now. Only its past and future make it seem real. Time controls it entirely, for sin is never wholly in the present. In any single instant, the attraction of guilt would be experienced as pain and nothing else and would be avoided. It has no attraction now. Its whole attraction is imaginary and therefore must be thought of in the past or in the future. It is impossible to accept the holy instant without reservation unless just for an instant you are willing to see no past or future. You cannot prepare for it without placing it in the future. <laughs> Release has given you the instant you desire it. Many have spent a lifetime in preparation and have indeed achieved their instance of success. This course does not attempt to teach more than they learned in time, but it does aim at saving time. You may be attempting to follow a very long road to the goal you have accepted. It is extremely difficult to reach atonement by fighting against sin. Enormous effort is expended in the attempt to make holy what is hated and despised. Nor is a lifetime of contemplation and long periods of meditation aimed at detachment from the body necessary. Hmm. All such attempts will ultimately succeed because of their purpose. Yeah, we're dreaming ourselves out of the dreaming. And as we do, the dream will get happier. So that's basically captured in that statement right here. All su such attempts will ultimately succeed because of their purpose, yet the means are tedious and very time consuming. For all of them look to the future for release from a state of present unworthiness and inadequacy. It's gonna be over soon. 
Your way will be different, not in the purpose, but in means. A holy relationship is a means of saving time. One instant spent together with your brother restores the universe to both of you. You are prepared. Now you need but to remember you need do nothing. It would be far more profitable now merely to concentrate on this than to consider what you should do. <laughs> That's just a very nice way of saying it. <laughs> Uh, it would be far more profitable merely to concentrate on this than to consider what you should do. When peace comes at last to those who wrestle with temptation and fight against the giving into sin, when the light comes at last into the mind given to contemplation, or when the goal is finally achieved by anyone, it always comes with just one happy realization. I need do nothing. It's the same thing as the... The yoga mantra, which is, uh, a, you know, uh, gone, gone, gone to the other shore upon arriving and having never left. Yes? You see? So when something hits you, it tells you it's always been this way. So basically, I need do nothing is a complete, a perfect reaction to recognizing nothing's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do it, yeah, yeah, it's not something you do, you don't do, I need do nothing, obviously, yeah, <laughs> you can't use the do in doing to do, I do nothing, <laughs> uh, here is the ultimate release, which everyone will one day find in his own way at his own time, hey, that's great news, isn't it, isn't that a very nice bit of news? Like if you were a, a beaver digging, you know, trying to do your dam, and a, a beaver god showed up and said, "Listen, beaver, it's fine. You don't got You don't have to finish the dam today. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> you need to do nothing. <laughs> With all the beavering, you need to do nothing really." Uh, you do not need this time. Time has been saved for you because you and your brother are together. This is the special means this course is using to save you time. You are not making use of the course if you insist on using means which have served others well, neglecting what was made for you. Save time for me by only this one preparation and practice doing nothing else. I need do nothing. <laughs> is a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided lo loyalty. Yes, you heard the message, yeah? The message is disarming, not a call to arms. I need do nothing, yes. Will there be a lot of doing? For sure. Will there be any one doing it? No. Yeah. So, I need do nothing is a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. Believe it for just one instant. I think uh, Nisigadada did that in a sense. He believed it in one instant, and that was it. He heard it from, he had faith in what his guru said, and he basically, that was it. Yeah. I need do nothing as a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. Believe it for just one instant, and you will accomplish more than is given to a century of contemplation or of struggle against temptation. To do anything involves the body, and if you recognize you need do nothing, you have withdrawn the body's value from your mind. Here is the quick and open door through which you slip past centuries of effort and escape from time. This is the way in which sin loses all attraction right now. For here is time denied and past and future gone. Who needs do nothing has no need for time. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activity of the body ceases to demand attention. Into this place the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. He will remain when you forget. This is very cool. He will remain when you forget and the body's activities return to occupy your conscious mind. Yet there will always be this place of rest to which you can return. 
and you will be more aware of this quiet center of the storm than all its raging activity. This quiet center in which you do nothing will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. For from this center, you will be directed how to use the body sinlessly. It is this center from which the body is absent that will keep it so in your awareness of it. I haven't, I haven't heard, read this in a long time. Yeah. This whole thing, this, uh, this quiet center is something we speak about in recovery as the unsuspected inner resource. Yeah. And the sense of a higher power of being available at all times, right where you are with no requirement necessary. Yeah. That's sort of what is implied here. And even though you seem to take off, the Holy Spirit doesn't, yeah? It's there in that center. And basically, all the stuff you're ever going to need to do or not need to do is going to be put to one task, which is the simple one of dreaming oneself out of the dreaming. You'll be observing of that. You'll be an expression of that, but you're not going to be the doer of that, yeah? You're going to be moved. You're not going to do the moving. You're going to be moved. You're going to be changed, but you're not going to be the one who's directing the change. You're going to submit to being changed. And where is that submission complete? In that, in that quiet place where there is no time, where the job is already done. I need do nothing. Yes. It's pretty cool. I'm happy. I'm happy. Karen sent me this. I hope I don't know if Karen's from this group or not, but she sent it to me this morning and I just uh, took it like a request. Yeah, like James Taylor playing fire and whatever. And uh, there you go. I should look at it again. So the idea, obviously, the the attention and interest to the body. It's going to be hard to you. Go, it's going to be hard to call off those dogs that constantly go back to the body. So, but maybe just maybe you can see it's not you that keeps going back to the body. It's the mental state that keeps referring to the body. You're not in in that activity. You're the seeing of that activity. That's where the relief lies. It isn't changing any of this. Like we someone shared here last week. I'm not denouncing effort. I'm trying to point out maybe there's a futility to it. Yeah. I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm saying look at what happens when there's a doing of something. There's things going on unbeknownst to us because the assumption is I'm doing it. Yeah. And that assumption has a, an agenda, which is to reinforce the eye that's doing it. Even when you're trying to do yourself out of the eye, it's reinforcing the eye. Yeah, this idea of Paul. Yeah, that's what we're pointing out. I have no opinion if you do tons of effort or no effort. I just just see maybe see the possible futility of what's going on because then there's a recognition and you get to that place they're speaking about or they're implying, which is that place of, is I need do nothing. Yeah, because all you're doing something is reinforcing the someone that's supposedly being the doer of it. Yes. So you get you get freedom from that by I need do nothing. Yeah. Because obviously the identification as the body, the body needs to do a lot of shit. It's got to go to the bathroom. I just had to put some socks on. The feet are cold. Yes, 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 yes. And of course, you can see even in spirituality, they, call it, they talk about a spiritual path. What goes on a path but a body? Yeah. What, what climbs to the top of the mountain? Not spirit, a body does. Yeah. So everything is referenced. All the topics we meet in life are referenced or framed with a body identification. Just like it says in the Course, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. There you go. Yeah. Now, the body's not going to get out of the body. 
But maybe from the point of I need do nothing, you're coming from the fact that you were never in a body. Yes? That's why there's I need do nothing. When there's an when there's an in, there's wanting to get out. That out usually entails a lot of doing, a lot of effort to escape that which you're in. The message of non-duality is you're not in that which you want to get out of. Yes? So therefore, the out isn't produced by effort. The out is produced by, by, by I need do nothing. Yeah? It's just like trying to escape from an imaginary place. Yeah? Why? It's an imaginary place. What's the appropriate response to that urge to escape from an imaginary place? No response. Just see it. It's not you. And then you're in the I, I need do nothing. You don't arrive at the I need do nothing. You see from the I need do nothing. Yeah. And then all the doing happens or doesn't happen. But as Buddha supposedly said, Events happen, deeds are done, but there's no individual doer thereof. It's not denying events and deeds. It's not denying actions. It's denying the one, yeah, who's saying it's the one who's doing the action. That's all. And what is that one pictured as? A body. Yeah. What is all the mental processes refer to you as? A body. Yeah. So... When we start seeing, oh no, the body, but it, we're seeing it from the body. The body ain't getting out of the body. When you see I need from I do need do nothing, it's not like a wrestling match or you have to vanquish the body or lose interest in the body like by flagellation or this shit. There's just, no, you're not that, yeah? And this quiet place, like he says, or whoever it was that came through, Yet there will always this be this place of rest, always. If something is always, nothing brought it about. Yeah? And nothing can unbring it about. Yeah? Like we say in recovery, you'll be placed in a position of neutrality with no thought or effort on your part. That's, a, that's an expression of I need do nothing right there. Yes? You're placed in a position of neutrality with no thought or effort on your part. Yeah? That's how you arrive, but not by not arriving. Yeah? That's how you don't leave, by realizing you can't. <laughs> there's no arriving, there's no leaving. Who says that this... This place of rest isn't what you truly are. Yeah? There will always be this place of rest. Obviously, it's not an address. It doesn't have a, a zip code. It's wherever you are at, at all times, no matter what. And then it says here, for from the center, from the center, you will be directed how to use the body. Yeah? This is why you see the body. Yeah? Not look from the body. Yeah? There are two possibilities. One is not of time. You see the body. Not from a body. The other is of time. You're looking from the body. Yeah? Those, that's, that's it. There's either a looking from the body, and then your whole idea about getting out of a body and all this stuff just gets more reinforcement of the body identification, or you see the body not from the body, yeah? And then maybe from there, the body will be put to a different use than you're putting it to, seemingly as the body, yeah? It's like the Holy Spirit in recovery, we call it a higher power, and basically, the Holy Spirit, if I remember correctly, from the Course, is sort of like taking the information being collated by the brain and, tra and translating it differently. So basically, the same stuff's coming in, but the Holy Spirit 
sees completely different information in it than the brain does because the brain's whole point is to keep referring back to the body, yes? Where the Holy Spirit has no interest in that. The Holy Spirit is going to translate it in a new novel way and the joy is you're going to find out when it downloads through you, yeah? You're going to find out when you're led by the Holy Spirit and the sense and the difference it feels like than when you're led by the head. Yeah? This one or two pages has a lot there. It's incredible. So if I gave any uh, homework, I, I, had, I would assign reading this. And while you're reading it, Question, who's the, who's the reading of it? <laughs> because the thing that's reading it always feels like it needs to do something. The head always feels like it needs to do something. Because like it said here, it doesn't exist. Like we used to quote, we used to speak out of it as the mental I am Paul is I was Paul. I will be Paul, therefore I am Paul. It says exactly that in different words. Yeah? It talks about it exactly, that this that's something else we're making to be ourselves has to be remembered to appear to be so now. Yeah? That's why there's past and future. The past and the future is an activity so that we can remember what we're not now. Yeah. And then in that remembering of what we're not, there's something else we're making to be ourselves. We're in the act of denial of what we are, which is this quiet place. Yes. Which true echo is you need do nothing. Yes. Yes. So I enjoyed it. That was cool. I think I'm going to read that again after I get get off of this. It's still triggering. It's like an avalanche. Yeah. All right. Anyone want to say anything? <laughs> hmm? Paul? Yes. Um, I, you know, my mind's spinning with all this and something what it, what you've said touched something, but the mind keeps saying, but what do I do to do nothing? Yes. <laughs> and, That's good, honey, because it's not you. And then you see the smallness of the system. It can't get it. No. Yeah. It only knows to do and to have and to not do and to lose. It doesn't have... In its in its its command programming is never I need do nothing. <laughs> it's, never, it's constantly constantly agitated. Yeah. Yes. There's no space or agitation can take off from I need do nothing. It it can't take flight. You you won't follow it for long. Yeah, you won't. You'll get used to being in that other space. You will, as it says, you'll become more and more familiar with this place. Yeah, you will. Yeah. And then you won't keep thinking the mental flight is your flight. I went, I, I spaced out. No, you never spaced out. Just like it said, you may forget, but that spirit doesn't. Yes. Yeah, and I would say you're more of spirit than you are of this mental idea called Glenda or Paul. I do, yeah. So that which we are never forgets, yeah. That which we're not constantly forgets because it has to to remember itself. It has to. You don't understand. It's a life or death thing for that something else that's been made to be ourselves. It's a life or death. Yeah. It can't have a God before it. Yeah. Because it will be seen right through. Yeah. (laughs) 
Why is there so much effort and thought? Because there's an inherent resistance. Yeah, the mental state is like a, a dog. It doesn't want to go to the vet, you know? It's just fucking it's refusing to go, yeah? It's, it's just, you got to, to a point, you have to start recognizing it, not, not, it's not you. Or like it said, you'll be so, it'll, it'll be so tedious, all the heavy lifting over and over again. It'll be never ending. It'll be like a never ending spiritual chore. Yeah. Of course it will work inevitably because its mind is dreaming it. Yeah. But the Course is saying this can save you a whole lot of time. Yeah. See, it talks about the means and he says the purpose. If the purpose is mind's going to dream itself out of the dreaming, nothing could stop that. Yes. The means can be different, though. Some means will save you time. Some other means will elongate time. Yeah? The Course says, hey, if you're reading this book, you're in the camp of saving time. That's the, one of the main points of the book, is to save us time. Not to change the purpose, but to, by the means, yeah? And the means is rooted in, truly, I need do nothing. Where other things is you'd have to do a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. So. And either way, it doesn't matter because nothing can stop us. We are big and mind. It doesn't matter. You drag your feet. It doesn't matter. You can be trying to leapfrog ahead. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a done deal. Like Ramana says, your head is in the tiger's mouth already. It's too, too late. <laughs> yeah. So, but if if the way that you're in seems to be uh, emphasizing too much too much of a blinder act, and you're not able to you know smell the coffee and enjoy the uh, the flowers and shit like that, I think there's something off there. Yeah. Like the course we're not. Uh, from this is from my old understanding like i haven't really touched it much but i remember they were it wasn't really for sacrifice and all this shit yeah sacrifice and martyrdom and it wasn't about that it says you know so yeah so i'm happy that i'm happy you see uh when the programming starts eating the programming, it's great. Yeah. It is. It's better. It's, I mean, it's great because the, the other one is captured by the Pink Floyd song, Comfortably Numb. Yeah. At least you're awake to the agitation and you can see something about it. Wow. I can't fucking believe that this thing is never going to learn. Self can't get out of self. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really so i mean if you're waiting you know for the parasite to become a service animal it's not going to happen yeah 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 <laughs> so <laughs> uh yeah Anyone else? No? Oh, good. We can end early today. Let me see. Anyone else? No, seriously? Oh, there's a... Uh, hmm? Who, honey? Patricia. Oh, Patricia. Oh, yeah, I see you. Hi. Yeah, it's like the spiritual ego is the one that is taking care of the journey and takes too much responsibility, take all, takes all the responsibility. That's, that's Yes. Yes. Well, if you're using the mechanism that support it, then of course it's going to seem quite easy to take responsibility yeah 
if you're trying to do yourself into a condition of being, yeah, it's going to have a field day with that. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> if you use its tools, it feels like it can use you for a commercial. <laughs> if you keep using the tools, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the idea of a spiritual ego. I feel there's something before that, which is a sense of the one who has an ego or doesn't have an ego, that sense of uh, self. Uh, I think uh, the idea of an ego is an objectification from the sense of self, sort of like going to a meeting about vampires and letting Dracula explain what he thinks a vampire is, which is anything other than Dracula. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But whatever works and gives you that feeling, you're on to something, yes. Yeah. If you're going to do tons of shit and arrive at I need do nothing, why not just start with I need do nothing? <laughs> Seems to be much more economical. Yeah. 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 I know, uh, I know people here are very interested in the course. I didn't remember. It had a very strong uh, take on it here when it says this is the special means this course is using to save you time you are not making use of the course if you insist on using means which have served others well neglecting what was made for you wow that's a little bit of a reprimand yeah from the course itself <laughs> <laughs> Save time for me by only this one preparation and practice doing nothing else. I need do nothing. Is a statement of allegiance. This is what I really feel around this one. I need do nothing is a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. Sometimes I feel being convinced is another way of putting it in a way. Yeah. There's the being convinced that you're not that. And then I need do nothing is the soundest, the most sound philosophy you can ever imagine, really. Just in come, it's based on a recognition of what you're not and those all those activities is not you and then I need do nothing is like the perfect response to that yes yeah because you see now just like we talked about it's not the effort it's how effort is being used to reinforce the one who's doing the effort seemingly yes so to try to get out of the one through effort when the effort is being used to reinforce the one, good luck, yeah? So maybe you can bypass that by having an understanding of the mental activity that's going along while you're just being yourself all day. There's a lot, there's an activity that's running sort of concurrently with us, yeah? That's uh, it's just turning everything into an interpretation and a translation and that something else that it's making to be ourself tends to garner a lot of interest and attention during the day. Yeah. How could some of that be released from that preoccupation and then allowed to return to that which has never left, you know, that quiet place or however he said they say it. Yeah. All that's needed is attention and interest. The place is there. But where is the attention and interest, yeah? The way it happened with me, when I saw everything that was 
living under the banner of being me or about me or around me or from me, when I saw that I wasn't that me, I lost interest in a lot of that activity, yeah? And that interest and attention went somewhere else. And let's say it went to this, this undivided loyalty, yeah? If we're going to use the courses terms, yeah? It went to that undivided loyalty and... Uh, Yeah, there was this power, yes? Yeah. So anyone else? Jeez, I can get that inspired by a page. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I used to really uh, stay on I Need Do Nothing quite a lot when I was involved in the course like 20 years ago. So I'm happy Karen sent me that message. Yeah. Reminded me I was pretty wise back then <laughs> to go to this, this piece of the book. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else, honey? We have plenty of time, but actually we save time, which is the whole point of the course, right? What? I got to turn this off. We save time. So we're going to end the meeting earlier because we saved a lot of time. Now go spend it unwisely for 20 minutes. Yeah. Isn't that pretty good? You go in for a five day retreat. You Half days. That's pretty good. I have something to share. Yeah. It's not really a question, but we're so much on A Course in Miracles. And uh, I facilitate a gentle healing class that um, part of our curriculum is looking at A Course in Miracles. And so we're on a lesson 292. And that is a happy outcome to all things is sure. So this interesting what thing. What was that? It's 292. A happy outcome to all things is sure. <clears throat> yeah. So there's this interesting thing happened. And so when I first read it, I felt my whole body tense up. And then it was almost like there was a snarl on my face every time I, in the morning when I would read it. I was having like this visceral, visceral reaction to this lesson. And I was like, oh, yeah. So that's the ego. That's how it's responding. And now wonder um, things didn't always seem to work out because embedded in the consciousness is this belief that things don't always work out. And that's why I was having a reaction to it. There was like a, a reaction, a muscular reaction in my body in different parts that was saying no to this beautiful lesson that was, you know, a happy outcome to all things is sure. And so I was like, no, because there's a part in the course, I think it's early on when it tells you uh, how to do the lessons and how to read the course, it says, you don't even have to believe them. You might even actively resist them. And then it says, just use them. And so I was like, okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'm having such a horrible reaction to this lesson that seems so positive. And, but I decided to just keep going with it. And I just was like, just saying it all day that day. And I've actually decided to stay with this lesson for three days because it's, it, I had a huge, huge shift with it. I kept yeah. at it. I kept at it. Something happened. I don't even know what. But whatever that was lifted. And now when I say a happy outcome to all things, I don't feel anything but a sense of well-being. Whereas that's not how it was the very beginning of the morning. So I just see that stark contrast and how it is literally that thorn that removes a thorn and how powerful the course can be even mm. when you don't actually believe what you're reading or you actively i mean 
literally my body was resisting it. So I just thought I'd share that because I don't know, maybe it's helpful to someone. Oh yeah. That would be my, uh, that's going to be my new Christmas card this year. A happy outcome to all things is sure. Yeah. Not bad. I won't even put any money in the card. Just <laughs> a happy outcome to all things is sure. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, there you go on. Yes. There's value. Uh, you know, when, when a stick goes into the weeds, it's valuable to see what comes up. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're not going to see it. Yeah. You're going to take it to be just the field of grass, but there's a lot of shit in there seemingly. And so you, you can further, you know, the whole idea of the non-duality is it starts providing an understanding that brings into stark contrast, the misunderstandings that we're living by. Yeah. And, uh, instead of trying to further add on to your understanding that's truly just a wealth of misunderstanding it doesn't give you anything it just brings into stark contrast the misunderstandings yes and it basically uh yeah so you can wear them and see what, how it feels yeah instead of having them affect you day in and day out you finally get to really feel it and then see Jesus. Yeah. And then you, you're not, you may be moved to do something, usually not. And then in the, I need do nothing, things change. Yeah. Things that can change are given permission to change. That which never changes is obvious. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you for the show. I don't think you'd want to say that in a bar. Yeah, you'd have to really uh, don't be proselytizing too much. Yeah, or any, you know, political rally or something. No, I think uh, a happy no, here's why, because I could see they could have the same reaction I did. My, my initial reaction was of pure resistance, even at a yeah. visceral level. But they may have a so, gun. Yeah, right? this is not you something it. you go preaching to anyone about. This no, is just an, no. for that inner realization and moving yeah, from living a lie it, or belief. Yeah. See, the thing was, I didn't even know I was. I had that in my belief system. The opposite. Because obviously, if I'm having a reaction to a happy outcome to all things is sure, then somewhere in my belief yeah. system is the belief well, that's just not true. So then the resistance was the telltale sign. Well, wait a minute. Something ego is having a hissy fit here. So yeah, no preaching needed. Just to change. even take it a little <laughs> farther back, honey. You can take it farther back and then just see you're not the one who has any of those beliefs. There's beliefs that are used to imply there's a one who has the beliefs. You could take it a little further and see that. Yeah. So you don't have to go through uh, the recycle bin and and change beliefs and shit like that. They will all align differently if the if the first domino doesn't fall the way it usually falls. So you see that there is no one who has the beliefs. Yeah. 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 So you see ones because the beliefs that are being used, some great beliefs are being used to imply the one who has the beliefs. And then uh, let's say misunderstandings are being used to do the same thing. There's no difference in its wanting to claim it. It doesn't matter if it's working or not working. The head will use it to claim that there's the one who believes that and the one who's not going to believe that anymore. Yeah. But the one is the same. Yes. Belief was there, there was the one, the belief is gone, there's the one. Yeah. 
uh, to me, to see that you're not the one uh, withdraws a lot of meaning to the beliefs and everything else. They're not as important as you think, really. They're really not. Yeah. Once you take the, there is a cog that can, it's like we used to do a, uh, an imagery about a, a row of knots, yeah? Like a big rope with knots in them. And let's say there's knots of, you know, believing that it's going to get bad. Yes. So that was knotted up there. Then there was a knot that I'm never going to be loved. Yeah. And then you go to a special workshop for that. And then there's a knot there. But if you follow the knots back, there's one knot. Yeah. Because when you get relief from one knot, it doesn't really produce a relief from all knots yeah it's just the one knot then you got to take another specific seminar whatever and then when you're busy unlock knotting this that one knots up again yeah so it becomes sort of like a whack-a-mole thing but if you bring it back and you get to sort of the first knot a thread from that knot runs through all the other knots so when you lose interest in you there's a loss of interest in a lot of other things, or at least the 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 placement of the interest and attention changes throughout all the knots. Yes, so you're on to something. So to me, yeah, I used to see beliefs. All right, I want to change those beliefs, but there was a belief that there was a Paul that was never seen as a belief. Yeah, it was seen as the one who had all the beliefs. You see. But the belief in you is also a belief. It's not true. So if you take everything a step back, and so therefore you don't go into, you don't become a master filer of the, of the filing system of beliefs changing and putting better ones, because there's that someone still, yeah? Question that. That which is always implied to be before everything beliefs, experiences, this and that, yes? That's even before ego, as one of the ladies, as Patricia said. There's the one, there's a feeling of being the one who has an ego or the one who hopes to lose an ego. That is not of ego. It's a different sense, yeah? That's what we're speaking about in non-duality, at least in my take on it, yeah? Is that. That sense that when there's a doing occurring, the sense of being the doer that gets implied, yeah? When there's seeing, the sense of being the seer by claiming the seeing. That's not ego. That's something else. That, that's a feeling of being the one, yeah? And if that one is made up of two-ness, that two-ness is never going to get through the eye of the needle, yeah? It's too big, yeah? It's too rich in self, so to speak. So the message of non-duality is to keep, is to take a further step back in a way. Yeah. And, uh, yes, I love how beliefs changed. We do recovery. It's called steps six and seven. We bring it up to a higher power. We ask that higher power to change it. Yeah. And there you go. But, before that is the feeling of being the one who's doing that act to the higher power. Yeah. I didn't in that happening. I was mental claiming of the beliefs, but I didn't mental claiming of all who, ha who has or doesn't have. Yes. That's the step that non duality provides. Yeah. Things are well and good, but sometimes they don't get to the exact. So that's why anything can be used to one. It doesn't have any, uh, there's no prejudice. It just claims whatever's happening or wherever you find yourself to be the one that's there. That's all. So when you have an incredible whack, and then things start to return, the head returns and says, I had an incredible whack, yes? 
So now it is claimed to be the one, and then you lose the sense of the of what really occurred. It got neutered in the translation, so to speak. Yeah. And now that it that memory of that incredible experience where you were totally absent is being used to reinforce the, your fake presence. Yeah. That's what it's doing now in time. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well see it, because if you're not, you're looking from it, yeah? And you can be super clear about 99.8% of the shit, but if you're not clear about that, what the hell, you know? It's like being a professor of holes who keeps falling into holes, yeah? (laughs) I would go to see a professor of holes with the hopes that I could learn not to fall into holes. I don't really want to know about holes other than to not not fall into them. (laughs) And the course calls it unhealed healers. Yeah. 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 Powerful statement. Unhealed healers. There can be... Unhealed healers can heal if there's not an act of identification. But... An incredible healer is unhealed if there's an identification as being the healer. Yeah? Yeah. So in AA, we say you have to have it to give it away. But I believe if you're willing to give it away, you have it. Yeah? So if you're just open to be used, some power will use you. And you'll know that power by its fruits. Because you'll see it. You'll see a change in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was a Bob Dylan song, which everyone gets used. Yeah. Well, it's a fact. This situation gets used. Like in AA, we have the new employer, which to employ means to use. And it implies there was an old employer, like that which took you over with the addiction. And that employed you or used you. So basically, and now let's say in the course, the Holy Spirit is using you, but you're going to be used by something, yeah, or nothing, really. Yeah. I hate to tell you it, yeah, you're not a, yeah, you don't even have your own garage. You're like one of those community share cars, yeah. A lot of shit's coming through. Yeah. So, anyone else? So we got four minutes. So you have to admit, we saved you time today. Four minutes. Yeah. We can say goodbye if you're ready. Um, yeah, let's say goodbye. I can draw that out pretty good. Honey, you did a great job. And thank you for that chair. Yeah. A lot more is going to be revealed. Yeah, it's awesome. Connie, there's Connie P. Nice to see you, honey. Hey, thank you, Patricia, for the share. You look like you don't have to go anywhere today. It's to nice. Just, just chilled out, chill out. We got Glenda, Glenda, Glenda. Yes. We got Walter, my brother from another mother. There he is. Yeah. <clears throat> We got Beverly. Nice hey, thank you, Beverly, for dropping in. Nice to see you. And Kim, Kim N. Yes. And we got uh, Jacqueline. I think she's cooking now. Very nice. I like that roof. It's cool. Uh, let's see who else is here. We got uh, AT Radio Computer. We got Kaiser. Oh, Kaiser. And we got Jim R. Nice to see these folks from uh, other groups. Uh, We got Chris. Chris B. from Mammoth Lakes. Thank you for your share today, Chris. Very moving. Yeah. And uh, hello to everyone. And we're around. Just go to zenbitchslap.com under events. All the talks, you know, all the uh, Zooms and everything and live talks or the information's there. And, um, yeah, have a nice night. See you later. Bye-bye.